Welcome to Ball Talk Deep, where we talk deep about Bod Sundrad and Irwin back at it again. Ladies and gentlemen, I know it's been a while. We've been, been at a minute. We've been off the map for a minute. Um, we apologize. Uh, we're going to be up front with y'all. We went on a trip about oh, two weeks now, right? Yeah, and I almost died. And <laughs> <laughs> we went to Denver. We did some mountain hiking. We reached 10,000 elevation. I know that much. 12,000. And Erwin here was gassed out, like literally <laughs> gassed out, almost <laughs> just thinking about it. And we got back, and we, we had to catch up with work and everything, so... We got a, a little backtracked with BTD because it's not our full time job yet. That's yet. the goal. When it is, bro, we're not gonna miss a date, guys. And trust, we, we trust. had an we had an epiphany when we were up there in the Rocky Mountains there in Colorado. What was the epiphany? Fuck the Miami Heat, man. We're Denver Nuggets fans. Let's go. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. But I do fuck with the Nuggets. Uh, yeah. Oh, I do actually see the Heat and the Nuggets being legit contenders this season, even before the season started, and now everything's just kind of going into play. Um, yeah. We did release, if you haven't watched it, players to watch out for this NBA season. Mm-hmm. We recorded that, by the way. I know it got uploaded during the season we recorded before the season started just for you know credibility sake and uh some of those things are some of those players are already starting to pan out yeah man and man, that josh giddy pick looking real good <laughs> and then speaking of players hoop central is back with the ranking topics mm-hmm. and this one was a great great topic for us to come back into the swing of things because we're ranking Four of the most exciting players of the of the NBA, the whole league right now. Mm-hmm. And if you guys can already see, we got Trey Young, John Morant, De'Aaron Fox, and LaMelo Ball. And if you're trying to rank these players from one to four, it is a really fucking hard thing to do right now. Right yeah. fucking now, it's a really hard thing to do. Some of these players have had incredible, incredible starts to the season. I'm looking at you, Ja. And all oh, some of these players have had incredible postseasons just recently. I'm Trey. looking at you, Trey. And some of these players have incredible potential. I'm looking at you, Lamelo. And bro, that says so much about these other three because everybody knows De'Aaron Fox is a fucking killer, fast as fuck. So yeah, he's fast as so, fuck, boy. Don't forget him. And yeah, this is hard. I'm gonna say the criteria for me when it comes to ranking these players, probably for us, is. <laughs> Current play level, mm-hmm. recent yeah. history, historic performance. Absolutely. So I would say the past year to two max, mm-hmm. and then a little bit of future trajectory. So it's not going to be full on, you know, who you would build around, but if you're ranking them now, and you also got to consider the recent history and a little bit of future because that comes into play when it comes to actually obje- objectively ranking them, mm-hmm. you got to think about that, along with their obviously their game. Their clutchness factor, what am I meant? Their athleticism, their leadership. A lot of people seem to forget when ranking players, it's not just all athletic and shooting and scoring ability, guys. Yeah, think leadership about it, man. is a big if thing, you, like if, legit. If you made it to the NBA, you're somewhat athletic. Like, yeah, yeah, man. Facts. Everybody is, man. Facts. Every single motherfucker, especially, I know some people are ragging on Zion right now with his weight. That's a, a, a fucking that, athletic beast. That guy's a tank, man. You see him coming down, you know, the lane, you're getting the fuck out of the way. But anyways, man. Uh, you see him coming down your grocery aisle, you're getting the fuck out. Yeah, man. You see, <laughs> you see him coming down the buffet, <laughs> man, you're leaving. <laughs> like, damn, man. But anyways, man, before we get too off topic over here, you guys already know the players. We're ranking them one through four. How you want to do this, Andrade? You wanna Let's go, go with the first. All right. All right. Oh. I'm going to be honest right now. I do not have the rest of my three ranked yet. I do. But I do have my first. Actually, maybe first two. All right. The other one, I'm going to have to like go off the bat. But I think I already know where I'm going to go with so, these four. Three, two, two one. Ja. ja. All right. All right. Second one, I got LaMelo. LaMelo, huh? Who you got? Ooh. Uh, you got someone else. I got Trey, man. You got Trey yeah, over man. LaMelo. Uh, but Lamelo right now, man, it's just what he's done in the playoffs. I know. That okay, postseason. maybe with Lamelo, I'm because, putting a little too much weight look, on future. Because look, Lamelo, he is killing it. His first game in the regular season, triple double. You can't name any better ways to be able to start an NBA season. But Trey was torching people when people were playing the hardest. Like okay. you know, yeah, they were give, they were bringing their A game in the freaking postseason, and he was able to do that in the Eastern Con- lead them to the Eastern Conference Finals. 
and Lamelo hasn't done that. Maybe there'll be that team this year that does that. Maybe you think I'm delusional. We'll see. That's the I beauty of the NBA. Third. Third. Oh, oh, fuck, man. That hard, bro. It's it, not it, that. It, I got tricked. It's it's super tough, man. Um, just on like, oh, how good he is already at such a young age, I'm going with Lamelo. Okay. That's number three. Even though the Aaron Fox is the better player in my opinion, um, but I'm saying based because of some potential. What he's doing right now, and then fourth, we both got Fox. Yeah, man, I'm like, bro, Fox. And you guys been following the channel for a while. Fox been part of my boys' crew for a minute. I love Fox, man. But I he's do gotta, love Fox. He's gotta get the. Fuck and he's got out a of... great mindset. I really think I agree with you. You gotta get the fuck out of Sacramento. Even and though if he does, when he does, not even if, because it's gonna happen. Even though it seems like they're building something good over there in Sacramento, man. Tyrese Halliburton, man, he seems like he's good. Yeah, but they're not building shit. I, I don't right give that organization building good it's anything. dumpster fire of a franchise. But, man. like, yeah. All right, let's just get into it. All right. Yeah. I, I got Ja for the following reasons. Actually, I'm, I want to bring up this tweet first because this is something I have to agree with and I think that's why we have these three players above Fox right now. Ben uh, said, you guys see this right here, Trey Young changed the entire Atlanta Hawks organization. John Morant changed the entire Memphis Grizzlies organization. LaMelo Ball changed the entire Charlotte Hornets organization. More than just stats, dot, dot, culture setters. That is why I said in the very beginning of this video, this ranking is very tough for me and I think just for anyone. And two, that's why I got to have all of them above Fox because Fox has not changed the organization in the Kings. Now you can argue, well, it's the Kings organization. It's a very shitty organization. But I would also argue, bro, look at LaMelo. Is the Hornets have been known as a dumpster fire of an organization. They fucking can I fuck shit up with the owner uh, Kemba. Of who the owner yeah. is. Yeah. Jordan would get mad jokes and memes like even, just even up to just a couple years ago of like how he runs that the management and the executives and how he chose them and how he, just the whole organization as a whole you can all say it's about the grizzlies grizzlies are not a bad organization they had their little run in the uh late 2000s early 2010s yeah grind city but again not a organization or a franchise that you would even think had like oh my god they're gonna be exciting or they're gonna be a, a legitimate contender at some point and then same with the hawks hawks for me Growing up, even until now, we're always like a mid tier organization. Mid tier organization. Like, yeah, they might compete. Yeah, they'll be in the playoffs. But like, you know, they would make it to the second, maybe even a conference final. But yeah. I, I would never mm -hmm. take no, them yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like seriously. Facts. Never view them. And I would each of those players in those organization. For me, more so, Jaw in Grizzlies and Lamelo and Hornets. Mm -hmm. I'm like. With the right pieces, these I'll, might be legitimate uh, title contenders and not I'll, too far down the line. I'll tell you this, man. We're, what's going on with Ja? I know it's very early, man, but this is probably like the scariest, like, man, like, I'll be really scared, man. Like, you know, Ja, he's shooting it from three. He's, he's shooting in the upper 40s. His usage percentage is going up as well. Part of the reason why is because uh, Jonas Valachunas. I'm not pronouncing it right, fuck it, but it's because he got traded to the Pelicans, and obviously Ja is doing what a superstar, uh, is emerging star do. is supposed to do, a legit number one, and he's stepping the fuck up. Yeah. You saw what he did against the Lakers? And he's stepping the fuck up on incredible efficiency. Yeah, you saw what happened with what he did to the Lakers? Man, he dropped 40 on their asses. Yeah. <laughs> I honestly like I had him on my players to watch this obviously if you yeah, guys yeah, seen yeah, it. Yeah, of course. But I did not expect him to start off this strong. There's also a tweet I saw, I'll try to find it, um, where someone said I went to Jaw's birthday party, I think it was, or some party during the summer, and he told me he was gonna come kill it this season and he's living up to it. I think Jaw even quote retweeted that tweet. If he keeps this up, man, like okay, not only is he gonna be like a shoe in for He'll most be in the MVP talk. Yeah. He'll be and in the MVP it'll be a shoe in for most improved player. For sure, with the yeah. way how he's doing, man. Yeah, that guy, man. And but, I'm so glad, like you brought up his three point shooting, because when we were doing these rankings, I remember there was at least a comment or two that ragged on like, oh, but he can't shoot from the outside. I'm like, look, right now he's a little, he's inconsistent with it, but with his work ethic and the way that he presents himself, I'm pretty sure he's going to develop it. Nah, man. Nah, I can't say I foresaw him developing this type of efficiency so quick. And again, it's, it's when he started the season, so we're not going to jump and be fucking calling him like Clay Thompson or anything yet, just yet. Yeah. But <laughs> it goes to show, like, 
mindset. Huge, huge part to a player's success. AK, look at Tyler Hero. What? All right, but that's it. That's so, Tyler, I'm going to bring him up in this video. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, all right, let's move on. I, I had LaMelo second. You had Trey second. Um, Trey, I pretty much... I agree with your pick of Trey for second. I'm going to tell you that right now. Even though I didn't put him second, I do agree with it because... Mm -hmm. Last year, we both kept getting uh, proven wrong by Hawks uh, fans and, and the Hawks in general for uh, I, underrating them during the playoff runs. I yeah, think man. the first two rounds, we were like, no, they're not nah, going to pass. Nah, we had the other nah. team. And then they just fake made it all the way to the conference finals. And they, and they gave the champs, you know, some trouble. They did give they, the champs they, some they, trouble. They, they did. Yeah, I pretty much explained my reason for Trey. I mean, and you got... That's true. I got LaMelo second because... I said earlier in the video, I might be putting a little too much weight on his future trajectory, but if I had to pick, and I, not even just building around, if I'm building an all-star team, I'm sorry, I'm picking LaMelo over Trey. Mm. Size is a big thing. Not just yet, but LaMelo will de develop his defense. I really, really think that's going to happen with him. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to go, like, aim at some point to go for that two-way player uh, he capability because he not only can he can he but like bro if he wants to be one of the top players in the league and one of the all time greats what it, and what is he 6'6 six, 6'7 six, six, you can't teach height 6'7 or 6'8 six, yeah you can't so, teach height at yeah. a point guard <laughs> and then I think he has even right now a better playmaking slash passion ability than Trey yeah like the LaMelo is one of the few players that I can legi legitimately say when I'm watching him play, especially the highlights, because obviously it's the highlights, so it's mm -hmm. like his best plays. Mm -hmm. You literally feel like he has eyes in the back of his head. You yeah, know like what I three, mean? Like, like some eyes, of the man. shit that he does. And then the fact that they're like on fast breaks, like, I'm just like, dude, like behind the back, bounce passes he makes it look easy on a too. fast break that should be making no sense he does make it look easy and i've said i've always praised this like the greats make playing incredible look so easy because of how smooth they do. but you know something that i learned as well um i actually was seeing this from uh, omar from house of highlights he's like the owner of house of highlights in a tiktok uh -huh. they're saying like okay well players traditionally they do like a hey, free throws or they they, they, they shoot from from like like yeah, yeah, regular yeah. like a shoot around practice Lamelo, he does these trick shots on purpose like you know when he's warming up so oh, that way it can that. make it look easy for him okay I mean that's smart that. that's that Jordan yeah, yeah, uh, mindset like you but, gotta treat your practices like real games so then when it comes to real games it just comes natural and to add it as well is okay compared Lamelo to Trey Trey is a scoring guard Lamelo, he's a pure point guard he's a true point guard yeah, true. and he can score yeah, if he has and to, yeah. he can bring it in. Yeah, he can shoot from the outside. If this man develops a nice mid range, he can be like Kawhi. But here's the thing: Kawhi, Kawhi doesn't play points. <laughs> <laughs> Lamelo, a six seven six eight point guard coming at you, bro. He's already taller than like I want to say at least eighty percent of point guards. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. he fucking backs up on you on mid, and he can just. Okay. It's over. It's over. So, yeah, you pretty much hit up all the points on LaMelo, man. Yeah. Um, so, that's why I got Trey third. Because of everything I just chose as uh, why I picked LaMelo over Trey, that's why I got Trey third for all the reasons you have him second. Like, post-game. Okay. I mean, I mean post, not post, post season success, leadership ability. They're interchangeable, man. And, yeah. like, look, easily towards the end of the year, the season, man, especially during the playoffs, this is, can definitely change. Yeah. Um, so Actually, one thing I do want to say is I would have put Trey over Lamelo, but one thing I have noticed about Lamelo this season, because you you have brought this up about Lamelo briefly, is that we were disappointed in how he uh, performed in last postseason. Yeah, remember he was just a rookie, so we're not like putting too much weight on that. He was but already off this as well. season, he seems to have a better leadership mentality and ability. Than already last season. There's a little more clutchness, a little more, just I don't know. When you, when he's on the floor, just seem the team just seems to like. Well, move look, like now I don't say move around him, but he just it, has that presence now. Well, look, man, it's usually while some rookies like Tyler Hero they had a sophomore slump, 
Lamelo, it seems like he's not gonna have a sophomore slump. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He had, and what's helping out is that he had a complete off season to work Thanks. on his game, focus on his game, and more importantly, man, this is not his first time around in the NBA already. This is the second time. Yeah. Things are gonna come a lot more naturally, a lot and more slower. And he was playing with adults. Before yeah, a lot of these other exactly. players were in college, yeah. this man was out here in Australia, which is arguably the second or third, depending I who say, you ask. I say third because league. Euroleague is the yeah. same. Yeah, well, yeah. some people argue that the Australian league now, especially Lee Ellis, is yeah. up there with the Euroleague. You know I, what uh, I mean? I, I feel you. But anyways, but, yeah, at the very least, the third. Let's address, you know, why the hell we put the Aaron Fox in number four, man. Look, man, Look I love that. Fox. I love Fox. Fox can ball. He can score. He can ball. I just feel like right now, it's more like an individual beast than like, okay, I can give him the keys to the city, give him the keys to the franchise, and not have to worry. You know what I mean? I I I, I think if you see, put him in the right organization, he he'll be. I fine. agree, I agree. But there's times where now I'm wondering, maybe he's an A1 Robin over an A1 Batman. The height is a part of it, but I could be wrong. We'll see. And also, I want him to continue do what Jaws is doing just develop a more consistent uh, perimeter shooter okay gotcha okay, but he's simple. fast as shit I mean he's course, arguably the, the fastest player in the league some people claim it some people don't but at the very least you know top two to three fastest player in the league easily uh, I love his mentality I've mentioned this before I really think he can lead a team even though I am saying right now I'm a little hesitant out of these four mm-hmm. one because Trey has proven it two Jaws proven it Jaws proven it when he beat the Warriors last season. Yeah. And Grizzlies are already on board in a guy who's only in his third year. Third year. This is third year, guys. Like, he's in his third year. He hasn't just done three years. In, he is, and he's only done two years in the NBA. That shit is. Well, yeah, make that, sense. Well, that's because of, like, the bubble and all that stuff going on, too. Man. Yeah. No, no, no. But I'm saying this is third yeah, yeah, season. Yeah, 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 yeah. Of course. And then, um, like I said, LaMelo's the one that's least proven, but that's why if I'm. Jumping up between Lamelo and Fox, I'm gonna go with Lamelo. All right, guys, but let us know in the comments what you guys think. You agree with our ranking? If not, what is your ranking? Um, and yeah, man, let us know why you guys have it on one. Why do you have a number four? Do you really even care? And why do you rank them in in like however you rank them? Because yes. uh, another thing I'll mention I for guys also, if I'm gonna, Lamelo has a bigger defensive uh, capability than Fox. Yeah. Because like Erwin says, you cannot teach height. Yeah. Trust me, I've tried doing it for myself. You can't. <laughs> I mean, you, you can could tweak it, man. You could put in your dating profile your six feet when you're five eleven. But hey, you know, <laughs> kind of. Um, this man. Hey, uh, hey, man. Look, I'm, 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 I was five eleven and a half in that screening, bro. So I'm only half an inch, bro. Yeah. Uh, anyways, whatever, man. This is when like off the rails. But appreciate all the love and the hate. You guys already know. Catch us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, all podcast streaming platforms. Ball talk deep. We'll catch you guys soon. For now, take later. care.